if I go to okay the frog is good if I go to player Q3 this will kill the object player so I made a little game um it's pretty freaking cool this is the world let me show you guys 2d look at that that's pretty awesome I can run this first time uh, I make an indie game especially on an 18 inch laptop which has felt so good but yeah my game works pretty well you know what um let's talk about how my few days with this laptop as a developer or a programmer has been like yeah sometimes it like pinches your hand you know I don't think I've ever had an 18 inch laptop, especially because I just tend to do dev work with my laptops, um, you know, catching up on trends, having fun with new tools and just doing tutorials and things like that, small little projects. Um, but now I'm excited because this has an RTX 40 series GPU inside. So I'm just going to open this up. done this before but um you know what i wanted to get this out of the way because this is a massive laptop and i'm expecting quite a lot from it so i like to check for component upgradeability i think this one will do something to keep in mind uh, just know that this is an engineering sample you guys know i'm not too big on benchmarks i just like to talk from experience as i use it uh, daily and play games on it because i'm going to be playing games on this the boys want me to hop with them on this new game called the uh, hill hill something anyways you guys will get to see that and i'm gonna be doing some dev work on this just switch all my stuff again <laughs> onto this laptop i don't know if you guys can see that right here it's probably not in focus but that screw lifts the chassis which allows you to open the rest of the laptop pretty easily so shout out msi for doing that there you go finally got it out um cool okay so these are the internals of the msi stealth 18 um super interesting 99.9 .9 watt hour battery um wi-fi card is upgradable so that's good ram stakes are upgradable and we have an m.2 slot right here and another one right here which is super interesting you can just install another one and maybe install your games here leave your os here uh, dual fans the whole cooling chamber cpu gpu uh, if you guys want to see the ram i can just open this up quickly there you go two ram sticks ddr5 eight gigabytes each so this makes uh 16 gigabytes but yeah no i think i'm pretty happy massive speakers that i see right here um cooling chamber seems to be super beefy right here right here right here this whole thing should cool down the system pretty well uh, i'm excited to try this out but yeah no that's uh the msi stealth 18 internals um yo john what's it what's the name of the game you guys are making me play hell diver 2 hell hell diver hell diver 2 hell diver 2 so that's uh what we're gonna be playing i'm excited because apparently this game is like super hyped up right now so before I show you our gaming session with the boys, it's no secret that this laptop is massive. I mean, imagine having 18 inches of screen real estate available to you at all times. I remember when I put this on my bed for the first time, I was like, oh, okay, this is different. Different but nice. For what it is and encompasses, being the first laptop of this size that delivers a great weight distribution is impressive. I, it can feel a tad heavier on you compared to other laptops, don't get me wrong, but 18 inches at 6.4 pounds is really nice. At home, I just felt like I had a whole monitor in front of me in my bed, so it's been 
definitely a different experience transporting these places with me. In fact, I had to change my bag. And because the charging brick needs to be big to juice this powerhouse, well, I need a backpack with a good amount of compartments. So portability is not its uh, strong suit, but that's not why you should buy a laptop like this. A laptop like this is essential if you are the type of person that wants power wherever you go. Power and screen real estate is what I've realized. And I know, I know some of you guys have been wondering why I've been hopping everywhere. Um, as you guys can see, I broke my ankle in tibia playing football about a month ago. I think I've said that about a thousand times, but it's been challenging managing work, my business and personal life. This isn't the first time I've been through this situation, by the way. Back in high school, a similar injury shattered my dreams of pursuing a career in football, and it took a huge mental toll on me. I felt like I lost part of myself and honestly, it was one of the toughest times of my life. That's why I decided it was cool to bring something up today, the value of speaking to a professional therapist with today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes it easier and less intimidating for people to start therapy. They match you with a licensed therapist tailored to your needs, preferences and location, giving you access to over 30,000 therapists in their network. This means you're not limited to the professionals in your area. You have a wide range of expertise at your fingertips and the best part is that you can start having therapy sessions in whatever format you prefer. Phone call, video chat or even messaging. For someone who's going through a tough time, talking to someone who understands and can provide professional guidance is invaluable. If you're feeling stuck, overwhelmed, or just need someone to talk to, I highly encourage you to check out BetterHelp. Go to betterhelp.com slash to get started. They'll match you with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less, and you can switch therapists easily if you feel the need and no additional cost. Click that link in my description to get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Now they did manufacture this laptop with a mini LED display. I like it. I actually have been really liking it. And I'm not sure if it's because I'm coming from a 14 inch panel, which means I have more room to work with. Look, being mini LED and not OLED is great in the sense that it's not prone to the risk of burning. It's also great because I've realized it can push much higher levels of brightness when it comes to very high dynamic ranges. For gaming and for consuming media, I've truly found this to be so good. With a 165Hz refresh rate, gaming with the voice is indeed amazing. I will in fact add the same comment to watching movies on Netflix or Amazon Prime. The only thing with mini LED that you need to be aware of is that when it comes to maybe working on edits, whether that's UI UX work, video or photos on Lightroom, dimming zones can cause halo effects or ghosting as you move elements around. This mainly happens because those dimming zones will cause the brightness to move against darker zones, so it can be tedious if you are someone that, I don't know, realizes these type of things. The good news is that you can turn that off if needed. Note that this is also a 100% DCI-P3 panel, and with the power it delivers, it really makes editing easy to work with. For me though, I've been mostly just continuing my coding journey with this laptop, especially because I'm able to use dynamic 83Hz to 165Hz on this panel. I think for people who game, need power for CAD programs, love to consume media content, and even game and software developers, this can really, really deliver. The same thing with this SteelSeries powered keyboard, it delivers. The only complaint I have is how the keyboard and display mesh together. Um, wait, let me explain this better. Sometimes when sitting in my bed, for example, if my RGB bar is on, I can see its reflection at the bottom of my screen, which can get annoying. Thankfully, that can be turned off through the SteelSeries GG software, or you can completely avoid it by just really tilting your screen backwards. Anyways, the cool thing with these type of laptops that have lots of room on their chassis and can be thicker than Ultrabooks is that companies can take full advantage of using larger components to make these keyboards feel even better. This almost feels a bit like a mix of a mechanical and tactile keyboard. I feel like I get full complete strokes when typing code and the key surface feels just right at the tip of my fingers. Like it's crazy smooth but also not rough to the touch. It also is a perky RGB layout with a larger numpad. For the programmers that enjoy using numpads, this can be nice for sure. The trackpad is great. 
It's actually massive. I complain every year about how MSI likes making small trackpads, but this one is great. It's actually a 12% improvement from their stealth models in terms of enlargement. That surface makes the touches feel even softer than my Zenbook, and my fingers feel like it slides with ease on this surface. So scrolling and just surfing for code has been completely fine. That's what I'm trying to get at. Overall, the only thing that's been a bit of a challenge for me is finding my keys, especially the backspace. I always hit the num lock by accident, and that's just because I'm not used to having an 18 inch laptop. I'm used to working so crammed, and now it's like I have all the freedom in the world. The other thing I wish was that I had another FN key towards the bottom left of the layout. So when it comes time to lower the volume, mute the laptop, kill the trackpad and webcam, I could do it with one hand. When it comes to ports, I've got zero complaints on my end. I mean, with so much power, I'm glad they added that SD card slot. Whether you want it or not, you can very much edit pictures on this, edit videos on DaVinci, sort footage if you need to. This also charges via USB-C, thanks to its power delivery 3.1, 140 watt Thunderbolt 4 port. It has an extra USB-C port alongside that and on the complete opposite end, an audio jack and two USB ports which I use for either connecting a mouse or my PlayStation headsets to game. The rest sits on the back of this shiny plastic material. Not sure how well this will age as you connect the actual charger to its port frequently, but it's super sleek and nice. I would have loved to see the finish on both sides of this laptop, but anyways, we've got HDMI 2.1 and an ethernet port to finalize its port selection. The speakers, um, for a Windows laptop, these are honestly fantastic speakers. They can get really loud. At home, it fills my entire living room with no problem. I mean, after all these speakers encompasses four 2 watt woofers and two 2 watt speakers, all sitting within this stainless steel Dynaudio speaker grill with an electroplated finish. Look, they don't have as much bass as I would have, have liked them to have for a laptop like this, but they really deliver, especially when you pair these with Nahimic. Design-wise, I think the stealth is stealthy. I mean, it's a sleek design that doesn't scream gaming. Yeah, it's got the RGB logo on the top panel and RGB light within the keyboard, but you can turn that off if you want to. I was told it's the lightest in its class with a broader 18-inch display nested within a 17-inch frame. A frame that measures around 15.75 inches in width, around 11 inches in length, and has a total thickness that is roughly very close to an inch. The chassis is a mix of glossy and matte magnesium aluminum parts. I realized that it's something that really shows when you take a look at the bottom grill. Usually laptop manufacturers love this stuff because magnesium alloys are lighter and do not bend or dent, although they can break or crack. Towards the bottom, I've been really enjoying the design of the rubber. I find it elevates the laptop enough to let airflow circulate properly. The hinges on this are also excellent. For something that holds onto such a massive display, I've never once felt the need to be careful when opening the lid. I think this should age more than well. It's a nice design and I am very impressed with this 1080p camera. Overall, I'd give this whole thing a 9 out of 10 for what it actually is. Because remember, this is a very powerful gaming laptop. Hell Divers 2. So we're just getting a little gaming sesh set up. Uh, we're waiting for one of our friends that's at the gym uh, so he can get home and hop on with us. And I'm waiting for John to come back because he went to go get something at home. But I'm excited to play on this freaking gaming laptop because it's fantastic, phenomenal. Six, seven. He goes to the gym late. Any game, Any game you give him, he excels <laughs> So I need some headphones. Yo, yo. So you aim the legs, not for this thing? So, you want to go to the So, yeah, I, um, I spent that night gaming with the boys. I mean, I had to. I've got a full RTX 4080 in here. And with a laptop that can push its GPU to a total power draw of 185 watts, 
it would almost be a disservice not to push this thing for you guys so it was a no-brainer for me to organize a little gaming sesh and learn how to play Helldivers 2 that night it really hit me how RTX 40 series laptops are crazy performant especially when they have a decent size to them with proper thermals Nvidia now pushes DLSSS 3.5 which is technically ray trace scenes that uses AI to reproduce better image quality. It's a technology that tries to optimize the denoising process in ray tracing computations, so it tries its best to make objects look smooth when in action. Honestly, that night felt like I was gaming on my own custom build minus the monitors, but at 18 inches, it was plenty. And also plenty for the little programming work I've been doing on this. Believe it or not, with the stealth, I decided to put web development on the side and actually push this a bit further when it comes to programming work. So I spent a whole day trying to learn how to code games on a platform called Godot. It's lightweight compared to Unity and Unreal Engine, but it's the perfect start for those who want to start learning and focus on less demanding 3D projects. That day from like 11 a.m. at around 92%, I started learning how to code a small 2D game. I spent so much time learning about sprites, how to script and give objects movements in order to animate them. I learned about object collisions, how to make objects interact, all of this while I was watching the tutorial on YouTube. Using Chrome for some documentation and using my mouse because interacting with a plane on a trackpad is hell. It was such a good experience for me. With best performance turned on and the laptop unplugged, at around 1.30 p.m. the laptop started dying. So eventually I obviously had to plug it in, but I was coding, testing the game over and over again, building the project structure, such a fun experience, way funner than what I was doing the days prior to that. Sunday, I was trying to figure out how to make my YOLO V8 model work on Ubuntu properly. I eventually figured that out. I also figured out that exporting those pre-trained models to an open Vino format works better for Intel-based laptops. They tend to deliver better results. All of this because I just wanted to test the NPU that this Intel Core Ultra 7 delivers. With Intel now offering proper AI capabilities and MSI being able to be on board of that with the MSI AI engine, it left for the Stealth 18 to be called the Stealth 18 AI Studio. Not only does this laptop deliver a full dedicated RTX GPU within, but because of Intel Core Ultra and their latest SoC, this also delivers Intel R graphics alongside that CPU and NPU. With the NPU though, it allows for AI related tasks to provide a more efficient computer experience while simultaneously offloading CPU and GPU computational loads. And so in a lot of cases, I felt like the laptop was pushing less out of its battery, like power efficiency feels a lot better this time around with laptops containing Meteor Lake within their chassis, and more specifically, when I wasn't using that 4080. During the first few days I've had this, I got to play with MSI new AI engine. It comes with a few intelligent preset features that allow you to focus on gaming, work, meetings, and even entertainment. You don't really have to do anything. The AI within the software gives the laptop the ability to sense these user scenarios. So yeah, that's been my life with an 18 inch laptop. I mainly spent time learning to code that indie game, trying to fix my Python code and playing with the boys. Like yeah, I consumed content on it, used Notion for my business, replied to emails, but I wanted to take advantage of how much power this thing has in order to put my experience to good use. I think I've gone through three different laptops since January. I'm about to pick one and stick with it for a bit. I'm sure going back to 14 inches is going to be a bit rough because uh, you really get used to 18 inches fairly quickly. For those looking into getting a powerhouse laptop that's not insanely bulky, I really suggest you check out this MSI Stealth 18 AI Studio unit. At 18 inches, the experience is so nice, especially while doing game development work. For those who want to game, maybe use this laptop for school. For the small amount of time I've had this, it's a 10 out of 10. However, like always, I recommend you check out other reviews, watch some benchmarks, and read other people's opinions so you can make an educated purchase. I'll leave you guys with this. Hope you've enjoyed the review, and I guess um, we'll talk soon. Take care. Thank you.